Hello! Today we will show you how to insert an animated object into a video using Motion Tracker. Motion Tracking is the reconstruction of the original recording camera's focal length, position and orientation over time based on a video for the purpose of subsequent insertion of 3D objects and effects into the video. First, create a Motion Tracker by opening the Tracker menu and clicking Motion Tracker. Go to the Footage tab and load your video in the Footage Property field. Open the Edit menu, click Project Settings, go to the Project tab and make sure that the frame rate of your project in the FPS field of the Time section to match that of your video. If this is not the case, set the frame rate of your project to match the frame rate of your video. In our case, the frame rate of the video is 30 frames per second and the project frame rate is also 30. Select the Motion Tracker in the Object Manager, go to the Footage tab and increase the resampling value as much as your computer allows. The higher the resampling value, the higher quality video will be displayed in the viewport and used for tracking. But the more memory will be required from your computer. We will increase the resampling value to 100%. Hit the Play Forwards button in the Animation Toolbar. Now our video is played without loss of quality. Finally, stop the video and go to the start of the timeline. Let's adjust the tracking settings. Go to the 2D Tracking tab of the Motion Tracker and select Options tab. In the Default Settings section, increase the default pattern size to 17 and reduce the default search size to 33. For automatic tracking, go to the Automatic Tracking tab. Here you can increase the number of tracks to get the better results for the camera reconstruction, but then processing will take longer. Let's increase the number of tracks to 1500. Make sure that the Auto Replace Lost Tracks box is checked, so that the lost tracks replaced with new ones in other places. And press the Auto Track button. The process and progress is displayed in the lower left corner. After processing is complete, click on the Play Forwards button to see the result. It's OK. Stop the video and go to the start of the timeline. Now let's create at least one track manually to make it easier to place our 3D object in the desired location. We are going to place our 3D object on the sand near the fence, about here. Therefore, we will look for a distinctive regions for tracking here. To zoom into a specific area, hold 2 on your keyboard and drag the mouse to the right or up with the left button pressed, or use mouse scroll wheel. To pen, hold the 1 key and drag the mouse around with the left button down. Right click on this region and select Create User Track here. To darken the video so that we can better see the tracks, go to the Footage tab of the Motion Tracker object and decrease the brightness to 10%. Then return to the 2D Tracking, Manual Tracking. The small square in the viewport defines the size of the track. You can adjust its size so that it contains the distinctive region by dragging the bottom right dot of the small square. The large square defines the area in which the track will be switched in the neighboring frame. Its size can be changed by dragging the bottom right dot of the large square. The track and search area sizes can also be changed in the user tracks list. Press the H key to return the video to its original state. Select the track in the viewport or in the user tracks list and press the manual track button. After that, click on the play forwards button to see the result. OK. Stop the video and go to the start. Once 2D tracking is complete, the process of reconstruction of camera motion in 3D space can be started. To do this, go to the 3D Solve tab 
of the motion tracker and press the Run 3D Solve button. It will take some time. The progress of the reconstruction process is displayed in the lower left corner. After the end of the process, go to the Object Manager and expand the Motion Tracker object by clicking on the plus to the left of its name. The top child object is the soft camera. If you select the soft camera and press the play forwards button in the animation toolbar, you will see that the position and direction of the camera is now animated. In the coordinates tab, we can observe the change of camera coordinates frame by frame. Let's go out of the camera, look at it from the outside, and come back. Then stop the animation and go to the start of the timeline. Another child objects under the motion tracker parent object are features that represent the positions of 2D tracks in 3D space and are visible as null objects. The features are divided into two groups, user features calculated based on manual tracks. In our case, there is only one manual feature since we created only one track manually and outer features, calculated based on each of the automatic tracks. The features are colored from green, most reliable, to red, least reliable. In the viewport, features are represented as points inside circles. By default, the radii of the circles are equal to each other, but the further a feature from us, the smaller its circle looks. The circles of the most distant features even merge into thick dots. Now create the position constraint to set the world origin. It will be the initial center of the coordinate axis for the objects you will add. Right click on the motion tracker in the object manager, select tracker tags and click position constraint. The position constraint tag has appeared to the right of the motion tracker in the object manager. A small orange circle has appeared in the center of the viewport. It is visible when the tag is selected. Drag this circle onto the desired track. We select our manual track. After that, in the position tab of the position constraint tag, the name of the corresponding feature, user00, will appear in the target property field. The world origin is now set onto user00 feature. Make sure that this feature colored green. This means it is reliable. After creating the world origin, which defines a zero point, let's set the direction of the coordinate axis by creating one vector constraint and one planar constraint. To create a vector constraint, right click on the motion tracker in the object manager, select tracker tags and click vector constraint. The vector constraint tag has appeared to the right of the motion tracker in the object manager. At the same time, a line appeared in the center of the viewport. Click on one of the ends of the line and move it onto the reliable track. We will move the first end of the line onto the zero point or world origin. Then click on the other end of the line and move it onto the other track, thus assigning the one of the coordinate axis. We will move the other end of the line to this track so that the line is parallel to the fence and set the axis property in the vector tab of the vector constraint tag to X. After this, the line colored red, indicating the X axis. In the target section of the vector constraint tag, the corresponding features are green. This means that our line is reliable. Switch to multiple view in the viewport to see the result. It will be more convenient if we assign the opposite direction for the X axis. For this, check the reverse axis box. Then return to the perspective view. Now we need to define the length of the line so that the object we add is comparable in size to the content of our video. For this, set the length property to known and enter the length of the line. In our case, it is about 150 centimeters. To create a planar constraint, right click on the motion tracker in the object manager, select tracker tags and click planar constraint. The planar constraint tag has appeared to the right of the motion tracker 
in the object manager. At the same time, a triangle appeared in the center of the viewport. Click on one of the ends of the triangle and move it onto the zero point. Then click on the second end of the triangle and move it onto the same track where we play the second end of the line. After that, click on the third end of the triangle and move it onto the third reliable track. Let it be this track. After that, set the axis property in the vector tab of the vector constraint tag to Y. Thus, we assigned that the plane, defined by three points, is perpendicular to the Y axis. The corresponding features are green. This indicates that the plane is reliable. Now, let's add an animated 3D object to the scene. To do this, open the File menu, click on the Merge project, and load the animated 3D object. We downloaded this character from Mixamo.com, then saved it as a Cinema 4D file. Make sure that the frame rate of the animated object matches the frame rate of your project. In our case, it is 30 frames per second. Click on the Play Forwards button to test the animation. Stop the animation and go to the start of the timeline. To restore the video in its original appearance, go to the Footage tab of the Motion Tracker object and increase the brightness to 100%. To track the results, run the Redshift Interactive Preview rendering by opening the Redshift menu, clicking on RS Render View and pressing the Start button. Move the Render View to the top left corner and make it smaller. To make the background video visible after rendering, select the Motion Tracker in the Object Manager, go to the Footage tab and press the Create Background Object button. Now let's bring the animated 3D object to life by adding lighting and shadow. First, create a plane and adjust its dimensions and position in the XZ plane so that it can catch the shadow from our 3D object. During the video shooting, the sun was on the right at the angle of about 60 degrees. Therefore, the shadow will be to the left of the 3D object. Right-click on the plane object in the Object Manager, select Render Text, and click on the RS object. Select the RS object tag to the right of the plane in the Object Manager, go to the Matte tab, check over right box, then check the Enabled box in General section to make the plane transparent and check the Enabled box in Shadow section so that we can see the shadow. Then create a Redshift Physical Sun by opening the Redshift menu, selecting Lights and clicking on the Physical Sun. Go to the Coordinates tab and adjust the rotation properties so that the shadow falls to the left of the 3D object at a distance of about 1 meter. Go to the Details tab and adjust the shadow properties. Let's add some transparency. Before rendering with Redshift, go to the Output section of the Render Settings and set the Fields property to Event First. This is what we got after rendering. Thank you for your attention, subscribe to the channel and put your finger up.